Procreate is known for being the leading digital painting program, but not many people realize that Procreate can easily be customized to allow you to draw to scale. In fact, I use Procreate every day in my architectural practice for everything from super loose design sketches to drafted and dimension plans, elevations, and sections. So I think of it as allowing me to do everything I need to do to take my designs from their earliest stages right up to the point where I can hand them off to 2D CAD or 3D modeling software, and all from my iPad. Over the seven years I've been using Procreate, I've basically developed two ways to draw to scale. The first technique is what I call retroactively designing to scale, where I start with a canvas that is 17 by 11 by 300 DPI, then import a sketch without any scale into that canvas. Next, I import a ready-made 300 DPI grid template into that same canvas, and I'll turn down the opacity on that grid a little bit. Now that grid is an 8th scale grid, and that will work on its own, but I also like to import one of my ready-made Architects 8th inch scale rulers. And you can see me positioning that so that I can reference these estimated dimensions I've made on the completely unscaled and freehand sketch. Once the grid template and the scale are in place, I'll then choose the sketch itself in the Layers menu and use the Transform tool to stretch and adjust the sketch so that the 18 feet I'm using as an example conforms to the 18 feet on the scale. And so now my freehand sketch is to scale. So that's retroactively designing to scale. The second method is what I call proactively designing to scale. And it involves designing to scale from the start, but still in an intuitive freehand way that takes advantage of the pencil. To do this, I create the new canvas by importing one of my grid templates, then add a scale ruler to match it. And in this case, I'll add one of my full length architectural scale rulers, again at eighth inch. And you can see here that the scale rulers are designed to match up with the scale grid. Then I just begin drawing freehand using the grid template as a guide and moving the scale around to make it easier than counting squares on the grid as I size the rooms and the door swings and all the important clearances I know I'm going to need. Regardless of whether I use the retroactive or proactive technique, the rest of my process involves adding layers of semi-opaque white, which serve as tracing paper, alternating with new drawing layers on which I sketch my design development ideas, with a goal of adding enough handwritten dimensions so that I can easily refer to that dimension when scaling the drawing in SketchUp or Revit, which is almost always the next step in my design process. You don't necessarily need to go to the lengths I went to in this sketch, where I was very carefully checking that all of our proposed dimensions made sense, and that all the smaller dimensions added up to the larger overall dimensions, but it's usually enough to know just one or two critical overall dimensions, just enough to help you scale the project up in SketchUp. Of course, it's also possible to import any plan you find on the internet into Procreate and to retroactively scale that plan the same way. All the same steps will apply. Once I get one of my plans to a place where I need it, I learned a long time ago to test some furniture inside that plan. So I'll import one of my 8th scale furniture templates. And you can see here that I can use the selection tool in rectangular mode to pop out this dining room table here. And again, these are all to scale at 300 DPI. Then I'll copy and paste just that item. You can see it appears on its own layer. I can turn off the overall template layer and then position that dining room table right where I need it. The key to the compatibility of these grid templates, scale rulers, and ff &E templates is that they are all built at 300 DPI. So as long as they are imported into a 300 DPI document, they will remain at their actual real world size and allow you to draft and design to scale accurately. So that's it for the importable stencil templates, but I've also created a new line of draw to scale brush stencils, or what I call one tap scale ruler stencils, FF and E stencils, and now some new people and landscape entourage stencils. The difference between these stencils and their importable cousins is that rather than having to import a template from iCloud Drive, 
You can access these stencils through the brush library. Tap once to make each sheet appear in your canvas, then use the selection tool in rectangular mode to quickly copy and paste just the item you want onto its own layer, just as you would with the importable templates. This allows you to stay in your canvas in the moment without having to pause to add a template. I've also added a number of improvements to my Architect standard brush set, including dotted and dashed lines, north arrows and other diagramming elements you can use for site analysis, and all of these work the same way where you can just grab them with the selection tool in rectangular mode and enlarge them any way you want. All of these stencils appear in the current color in the color palette. So for instance, when I tap out this architect scale at 1 8 inch, it appears in the blue currently selected in the color palette, but with some transparency so you can still see through it to the underlying plan. And the same is true of the metric or any of the other half scale rulers inside the scale ruler brush library menu. There are also included in the scale ruler brush set what I call quick grids. These are grids that have, in this case, an eighth scale architect's ruler and a quarter scale architect's ruler attached to the grid itself. So you can call up these quick grids anytime you want to quickly test a design idea or maybe check out a wall section. The FF and E brush stencils are organized by room and function in both eighth inch scale and quarter inch scale for those of you working at larger scales. And by the way, these eighth and quarter inch templates are interchangeable with metric 1 to 100 and 1 to 50 scales. It turns out there's only a 4% difference in size, so they'll be useful to both imperial based architects and metric based architects and designers. The last set of new brush stencils is what I call the Entourage Brush Stencil Set, featuring 100 people in active and sitting positions in the three different styles, grayscale, monotone, and outline. And this same brush set includes four pages of realistic trees in both plan and elevation, plants, and overhanging branches for those of you who wish to add any of these kinds of grayscale images to your elevations and perspectives. And because these stencils come in as solid objects, you can do some cool things with them, like drag and drop the currently selected color into the stencils and immediately color them. Or you can select any one of the stencils, isolate it on its own layer, as we saw before, and then select the stencil inside the layer and use any one of your brushes to render the stencil, applying two or three or even more colors to any one of these to give them more of a realistic look inside your renderings. And because they're solid, you can even do something like duplicate that layer, then use the transform tool in distort mode to turn that layer into a shadow shape, then drop a new, more shadowy color into that shape. And you'll get this effect very quickly. So there's a lot of versatility to these stencils. To learn more about how I export plans from Procreate to SketchUp to begin building them in 3D, check out the video to the left up here. To see other ideas for working smarter, faster, and better in Procreate, check out this video on the right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.